to begin by asking Arlene Cossum to come up and share a word with us. She has been helping us make a deeper connection with Large and their work as well as her sharing and caring work. Thank you very much, Bruce. Good morning. I love the uh, display up on the screen. Um, briefly, uh, on the 22nd of this month, it's a uh, Friday, Larsh is having what they call their annual extravaganza. They have all their uh, artworks and things that they've made during the year on display for sale. There will also be a reception at the Rainbow Workshop where the uh, sale will be held. There is a fee. It's $10 in advance, 15 at the door, but you get a meal and you get the opportunity to get first dibs on all their creations for the Christmas season. Uh, the second, there are two um, December events. One is the December 8th, Sunday, December 8th, sale of the uh, Rainbow Workshop here at our church. And that's what the uh, sign was, was uh, displaying. Um, and then on December 13th, which is also a Friday, their annual Living at Nativity, that is one of the most moving experiences I've ever had in seeing any kind of presentation. So I urge you to consider, if you're not doing anything on, on Friday, December 13th, it will be at Christ the King, so it's close by. It's where we had our, our recent uh, problems, the Eye Care Problems Assembly. Uh, I urge you to attend. It is very meaningful and beautiful. Uh, now, uh, sharing and caring, we have many new members in the past couple of years, and uh, you may not know what sharing and caring is all about. It's our, our own members' uh, volunteer services to those of our members who are going through a particular crisis or difficult circumstances. Uh, originally, uh, sharing and caring was set up to serve those of our members who had insufficient human resource help and insufficient finances to help them through a crisis. Uh, but we don't turn any one of our members away. Uh, lots of people uh, just want to have the comfort of knowing your fellow parishioners care and come by and see you and, and bring a little meal or something. Sharing and caring services are meals, their rides, their rides to the doctor, other health uh, concerns. Um, it is rides to church, rides to the supermarket. We, we, do, uh, we help with paperwork, we do light housekeeping, we uh, socialize, we bring you to social events. It, it is a, a wonderful opportunity to serve your fellow parishioners in need. When a need arises, I send out an email. If you cannot respond, please don't. I don't want anyone to feel put upon or put into difficult circumstances by having to say, I can't. But if you can respond, do respond to me or to Barbara in the office or to Bruce. And um, I, I hope uh, that people will respond to this. Uh, there are sign-up forms on the table, the, the uh, um, missions table in the hall. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Uh, we are going to be not marching, but walking um, for crop walk this afternoon. And so we need your help to make sure our steps are light and quick, and they can help by making pledges. Yes, uh, Alex and I are collecting as for the youth group, as part of the prop walk. We will be back in the fellowship hall after the service. Just approach one of us, and we'll be taking pledges, and we're going uh, over to Ed Austin, Ed Austin Park. Park to do that walk later this afternoon. And uh, all of the funds go to crop, which helps to address hunger issues worldwide, and a uh, percentage of it stays here and goes to Arlington Community Services to help those who are hungry here in our own community as well. So thank you all for doing that, and thank you for your support of that. Good morning. I have morning. some news for you this morning. Um, most of you are aware of the fact that we have been attempting to sell the property across the street for off and on for a number of years. We actually have uh, an offer on hand, and um, we are, uh, council and Evanep will meet immediately after the service to bring this to closure, but we know that we, we have enough votes at this point in time to approve this. The offer is for $180,000. And um, because of the cost of getting rid of the trees, that's the reason we're willing to accept that price of it, because the price you have to pay per inch to get rid of trees to be able to develop it is outrageous. So it will be a great benefit 
to the church and that we will no longer be paying to maintain things and to pay the insurance on the property and all of those kinds of things. So we're very excited about this. It's been a long process. I don't even remember how many years ago it was that the church voted to sell the property, but it's what, more at than least, 10. yeah, more than 10 years ago. And so we're finally bringing this to fruition and we're very excited about that. And so we will literally cast the votes immediately after the service today. And, and Bill is our moderator. We'll, we'll sign the contract at that point in time. But I just wanted to bring you up to date on what Evan and the council have been doing with this. Thank you. That is good news. Yeah. Um, I'm going to feel your thunder and say there are uh, copies. If you read music or want to see the music for the hymns, uh, the four songs that we sing, there are large copies on the table in the back. If you want to get that when we get up to greet one another, you're welcome to do that. Just wanted to give you that heads up. And before we greet everyone, I want to greet and welcome back home Craig and Sue Munn, who are back with us for this morning. So welcome them, and good to have you all back. Let us greet one another. If you're able, stand and welcome someone, greet someone new this morning in the name of the Lord. Fill us with your spirit, 
that we might respond faithfully. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Amen. <coughs> Oh, how glorious, full oh, of love.
join me in our prayer of dedication. Please begin with me. O oh, blessing God, may these tithes and offerings be a sign of our gratitude for your infinite grace. May we use them wisely and well through our ministries here in our community, as well as our church's wider mission. Help us to be as generous in giving to others as you have been to us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you're being seated, let me invite any of the children that are here to come up and join me for a minute or two, and let us have a chance to visit for a second. Come on up. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Can you think about the best birthday gift you ever got? I bet it was pretty special. You don't have to tell me. Just think about that. And think about how good that felt. And I want to tell you something that may surprise you. The person who gave it probably felt even better than you when they gave it. Do you believe that? Giving someone a gift is a real joy. It's really special. And the Bible tells us God loves to give us gifts and blessings and love. And it makes God smile when we receive those gifts, when we use that love and share it with others, and when we show our gratitude by being loving to others. So if you get a chance, if you've got a birthday coming or not, or maybe at Christmas, or maybe just because today the sun is shining, that's a pretty good gift, isn't it? Say thanks to God, and then maybe do something good as a gift to someone else. Maybe just a hug for someone, or a thank you, or a I'm glad you're here. There's lots of ways we can give gifts without spending a penny, right? So think about that. Let's ask Jesus to help us figure out how to give someone a gift today. Will you join me in prayer? Jesus, thank you for all the love you show us. We have so much. Help us give it away. Help us to find a way to give someone a gift today. And if it's a gift of love, when we smile thinking about it, Remind us you're smiling too. And you're holding it in prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up this morning. And remember, give a gift if you can. It's always a good feeling. As we transition to our All Saints Remembrance Time, I invite you to have in your hearts those whose names we will be lifting up. What we will do in a moment is I will ask if Bill Detour will come up and help me as our moderator. Come on up. And um, we will call each name, and uh, there will be a chime sounded. And then I will invite, as soon as the name is called, if there is a family member here, please come forward, and we will hand that to you. Or if there is more than one and you want to come up, please feel free to do so. And so let us hold each of these families in our prayers as we remember those we call out who have entered the church triumphant as saints over the past year since this time last year. Members and friends of our congregation who are now in that time of rejoicing and celebration that never ends. John Huggins, December 24, 2018. Helen Bliss, May 6th, 2019. <clears throat> Mary Jane Harris, June 5th, 2019. Thank you. Come forward. Jessica Morgan, August 30th, 2019. J. 
James Brandell, August 27, 2019. <coughs> Randy Creel, August 30th, 2019. Ruth K. September 27, Will you join me in the spirit of prayer again, please? God of life, God of blessing, God who opens the doors to eternity and who welcomes in all your children, hear us as we remember and give thanks, knowing that your memory and your love never fade, and that in the gift of life, and the welcome to life everlasting. Your grace, mercy, and peace are the blessing that all hearts seek. Hear us now as we remember those who have gone before us, entering into the church triumphant, their lives at one with you. They have passed through the portals of death and suffering where there is no more suffering or death. And life everlasting is the victory that is theirs. Now grant that peace which passes all understanding. The hope of a life that shall end us be. A time of reunion and rejoicing in the day to come and the assurance of a table spread where all are welcome, and the family table of the eternal and everlasting and ever-loving one God awaits. Hear us as we ask all this in the name of the one who is the first fruits of the resurrection, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. As you're able, would you stand as we sing for all the saints? <laughs>
and I invite you to join your hearts with me in prayer again. Let us pray. Holy and everlasting God, we come before you in thanksgiving for your extravagant generosity, the love that pours from your heart, the light that comes by your grace. Hear us as we rejoice and give thanks. Hear us as we praise you and celebrate, knowing that the victory that you have already given to so many of our beloved sisters and brothers still awaits us as well. And by that, make our hearts brave again. And may our faith grow strong. Forgive us, O oh God, when our hearts tremble and our faith falters. Help us to fear not. Remind us of the power of your love to overcome all things, not only death itself, but fear and hatred, evil and injustice, you are the conquering God. O living Christ, remind us on our journey that we do not walk alone, but that hand in hand with you, the hope we have in you puts all fear to flight, lifts all doubt and gloom, brings light and life, that your glory may shine through, and hear us as we call out for the Spirit. Holy Spirit, as we come and offer these prayers, we not only remember those of our sisters and brothers, but we remember those who serve our nation, veterans of every service part. We pray that you would hear our thanksgiving for their sacrifices. We pray your blessing on those that we lift up, especially those who mourn this day, the Gafford family especially. We pray your strength and encouragement be with Chuck and Donna, we lift up Larry and Gretchen. We pray for Virginia and Dottie. We thank you for those who serve our church as part of our sharing and caring ministry. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are part of the Arch and its ministry. We give thanks for the youth and their leaders who will walk in the crosswalk. We rejoice that you have opened a door for us as good stewards to sell the property that is across our parking lot. Hear us also as we pray your blessing on those who travel and those who are visiting, and especially on Craig and Sue. We thank you for each of our guests this morning. May their time and worship here be a blessing to them and a glory to you. Hear us, O oh Spirit, not only in these prayers, but hear us as we offer our hearts to you in silence, and as we listen for you, our still speaking God, in these moments of prayer.
Our scripture lesson is found in the Gospel of Luke, reading in the 8th chapter, verses 4 through 8. Listen to the Spirit speaking in these verses. When a great crowd gathered, and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said to them in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on a path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. Here ends the reading of this portion of God's holy word. May God bless us not only in, in our reading and hearing, but may God help us to strive to respond faithfully in our understanding and in our walk in faith. Amen. Thank you. 
So this morning I want to suggest to you that more than a sermon, this is perhaps a meditation. Because I'm not sure I have a whole lot I want to say, thou shalt, or you oughta, as much as I want to ponder some questions with you that I don't necessarily have, well, I don't have all the answers to. But the first question is kind of what I was sharing with the children. Can you remember the most extravagant gift you've ever received? It may not have been wrapped in a package. It may not have been tied in a bow. It might have been the gift of someone's time, someone's love, someone's forgiveness. It might have been a gift of you being able to have the power to forgive someone else. But just think about what kinds of extravagant, unexpected signs of generosity you've received in your life. And the other side of that is, of course, for each of us to ask ourselves, when was the time when we felt that we gave in an extravagantly generous way? Not to pat ourselves on the back necessarily, but maybe to reclaim a feeling of what that was like. Because I truly believe what I said to the children is that I probably remember more the opportunity that I've been given to be generous than I have times when I've received extravagant and generous gifts. Not to say I don't appreciate them, and if you want to line up to do that, I would welcome that any time. <laughs> and I don't want to seem like I'm being, you know, turning away gifts. But those questions are ones that probably, uh, at least I haven't thought a lot about. And so as we talk about what I'm calling stewardship growth season, I'm thinking about how I need to grow in my understanding of extravagant generosity. I've been suggesting that if we thought about generosity, we might think that God's generosity is a little bit crazy. God doesn't measure every gift. God doesn't ponder and, and drop out by droplet grace, love, mercy, the gifts that sustain life that are both physical as well as spiritual. God pours them out in ways that, as we used to say back in those hippie days, blows your mind. So, as we think about that and perhaps wonder what that means, then perhaps we can begin to get a hold of what it means to talk about an extravagant generosity. So this morning's scripture is kind of like a story about God the crazy farmer. <laughs> now, I want to caution you, I'm not claiming I know much of anything about farming or gardening. I probably couldn't grow a tomato if you spotted me a tomato. But I know enough to think that if this story, as we listen to it, is saying something about God, God is certainly a crazy farmer. What farmer goes out and just throws seed around anywhere and everywhere? If I know anything about farming, my assumption is that seed is expensive, and some farmers will spend a whole year's income from a previous bad crop to buy enough seed because the farmer's almanac suggests that next crop will be abundant, extravagant, overwhelming. And they will take that risk of every dollar they've got to buy the seed, to plant, bless you, in order to have the best harvest they can in the coming year. And I don't think that most farmers just throw that seed anywhere. They go out and they do something to the ground before they put the plants there. I thought the word was tilling. My wife said it's plowing. She's grown far more things than I ever have, so I'll take her word for it. She's grown strawberries and mint and blueberries and things like that. Long time. But they plow it, they till it, they do something to the ground to prepare it for that seed. I would assume a good farmer would fertilize the ground to make sure it's good quality soil so that no seed is wasted. And of course they would harvest it and, and all those things. But this crazy farmer 
in Jesus' parable, goes out and just kind of tosses seed everywhere, wherever it falls, whatever happens to it, happens to it. We. Is that your image of God? Have you ever thought about God being kind of crazy and extravagant that way? We have to be careful about parables because they're not all, as I've said before, A plus B equals C. Not every farmer or every boss or every king in every parable is God. But Jesus certainly is suggesting something about the extravagant generosity of God to me in this passage. You have to hear what Jesus says, and what he says is, if you have ears to hear, listen. Now, the bad part about that is that doesn't tell me what to do. And I'm a good husband. I like to be told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how good a husband is, but I do like to be told what to do. That's another story. In this passage, as we read it, and as we struggle with what Jesus is telling us, the hard part is, how do we find ourselves in that passage? Are we seed, or are we soil? You may feel like on some days, you're that seed that's been dropped on rocky ground, and there isn't enough water for you to begin to grow. You may feel like some days, you're the the soil that is full of weeds, and everything around you is chucking you off. You may feel like you're the seed that fell in good soil, and you may be grateful for the fact that you neither bought the farm or paid for the seed, but there you are, blessed, multiplying, more than you can abundantly measure or give thanks for. Wherever we find ourselves in this, and oh, by the way, maybe you feel like the farmer some days, casting out seed everywhere, I know there are probably some of you who feel like you're on that place in life where the birds aren't the blue birds of happiness coming for you. They're those birds out of an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> but wherever you find yourself, the reality is Jesus invites us to have the ears to hear. And I believe the hearts to understand the ridiculous generosity of God, the extravagant generosity of God. Now this is the part where I'm supposed to, in a stewardship sermon, start telling you what you should give, and how much you should give, and when you should give. Maybe I should do like that uh, video that I saw of uh, the president's evangelical advisor, spiritual advisor, who suggested that all those who believed in God should take all of their January income whether by pay or by dividend or whatever, and send it to her. But maybe just change the name and say, send it to me. I mean, after all, she says, if you don't do that, God's going to strike you down. But you see, the reality is God is not a quid pro quo God. God doesn't only give in relation to what we give. God doesn't withhold because we withhold. God doesn't curse us if we don't live up to God's expectations. God is a ridiculous, extravagant, generous, giving God. And God's love is immeasurable in the ways in which it touches our lives. And so if we have ears to hear, certainly we can respond. And we do. We respond in ways as a congregation that Lives have been saved. Lives have been changed. Lives have been lifted up. Not just those of us sitting here. Children and youth out of the community. Their lives have been saved. Their futures have been saved because of work we've done to bring justice so that they're not arrested but given a chance at life through a civil citation that makes them be accountable for what they do. We say the lives of families who instead of living in their cars or on the streets, have a safe place to go at night. We save lives of people who are hungry, who wouldn't know where their next meal is coming from if we didn't 
bring whatever we could and give it to Arlington Community Services. Oh, by the way, commercial interruption. The uh, Mission Committee Corps Ministry has put out in the entryway in one of the crates brown paper shopping bags with little orange sheets on them that have a list of things that you can bring in if you want to make an extra over and above gift of food for those who otherwise will go hungry at Thanksgiving. If you can bring it in by next week, we'll get it all to them and they will put it in Thanksgiving baskets and someone who otherwise may not have a meal will probably have many meals. Thank you in advance. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> what we need to think about, I guess, is how does all this happen? Because the reality is life requires physical resources, doesn't it? It requires food. It requires housing. It requires medical care. It requires all kinds of things. The most interesting part of this passage when I started studying it is not the part that I read to you, to me. It's the part before this. I could stop here and say go home and read it, but I have ten more minutes, so I'm going to talk about it. Verses 1 through 4 tell us how all this storytelling came about. Luke says Jesus has gotten ready to do his big evangelistic tour. He's fired up the bus. He's warmed up the gospel choir. He's got the 12 disciples with him. And they are headed out to the villages and towns to teach and to heal and to bless and to tell stories that make people go, hmm, what did he mean by that? But here's the one I find most interesting. It says along with those 12 disciples were a bunch of women who had been healed, saved, Evil spirits had been taken from them. And they were along, and they were underwriting the ministry. Now, my wife raised an interesting question because, as I've told you before, most of the women in that time didn't have any money. They were usually, if they were widows or single women, they were <coughs> broke. They had no money, no way to support anything. And yet, this isn't the only instance in Scripture that it tells us the women were the ones supporting the ministry. Paul affirms it in several places in his epistles. Acts affirms that the women were ones who helped get the Jesus movement off the ground. They were the ones that gave and managed the money. And I don't know what that says to you, but I guess to me it once again cries out that anyone with ears to hear, hear and listen. So this morning I don't have a whole lot of you should go do this, you should go do that. But maybe if all of us have ears to hear and listen, we'll hear something in all this seed I've been scattering that will take root. And my prayer is it will bear fruit for you, for the world, for Christ, a hundredfold. I don't know about you, but all I can do sometimes is sit and wonder about the extravagant generosity of our God. Amen. Please pray with me. God, I can't understand why you are so generous when so often I am so unthankful. I find it hard to understand how you can continue to love and bless and forgive, to provide all that we have and all that we are, and even more to provide the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. And so often we not only don't have ears to hear, it seems we don't have hearts to feel or to love back. Yet you keep on in your extravagant, generous way, loving, giving, and blessing. Hear us as we say thanks now in Jesus' name.
Amen. Now our final hymn, the tender, blessed be the vine. <laughs> Be with you, that you may go out and touch the world with that.